Welcome to our second day working on our small entryway. And when I mean small entryway, this place couldn't be any tinier. But luckily for us, it opens into a grand hallway, which we're going to extend this renovation into. But if you missed yesterday's video, you'll miss that we put up some shiplap, which is amazing for our late 89 abandoned captain's home. It's very time period for this house. We created a very absolutely dreamy wood custom corbel shelf to be able to create some coat storage. And you saw at the end of that video that I dragged in an old bench that I had ruined with a cup of warm tea. So during this video, you're going to see me use that 50 cent gorgeous piece of fabric I picked up at the barn thrift sale. You're going to see me DIY a full oil painting and we're going to make some coordinates for our actual house wall art to be able to put above the door in this space. We've got windows to frame, we've got DIY curtains. We have a lot more to do in this tiny space. So let's get started. Or the verdict is in. The verdict is in. Polstering the bench that I ruined with a teacup. I love refinishing furniture, so it's about time I did another piece. In fact, I have a couple in the garage that you haven't seen that I'm excited to get to, but we have more pertinent things to work on before I can pull those out and bring them for a rainy day. But today we're going to fingers crossed pray that this is solid wood. I think it is, but I've been tricked before. So I'm going to sand the whole top. I'm going to take some of our YouTube family's advice and keep this as a completely stained bench. And although I love the idea of having an upholstered bench there, I think I'm going to DIY kind of like a non-permanent upholstered bench because as you guys mentioned, I always talk about W season and you know it's coming up and I'm gonna wanna make this into W season. And so to have something that's that kind of a print all year round, maybe I won't want that. So I'm going to do a temporary cushion that can go on this. But before that, I wanna make this completely stained and hopefully match the shelf that we DIY'd in yesterday's video so that when I don't want the upholstery, I still have a beautiful stained bench there to throw pillows on and things like that. So, all right, we're going, we're not even plugged in. That is not a good start. I'm gonna do the really fun, easy, smooth top part and then I'll leave the rougher, harder to get spots for Phil. <laughs> Thanks, hon. <laughs> Hopefully it's real wood and that's not the glue. This like black. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I don't yeah. like that at all. It's not wood. <laughs> Dang it, I knew it! I knew that even though it was heavy, it was all just phony baloney. Oh my gosh. It can't, it's not, it's definitely not. Like I can see some there, but then as soon as I get that top little layer, I'm seeing particle board. It's veneered. And that's what the black is on the sides. It's a veneer. You can see. This is particle. It's cardboardy. This is like a veneer wood sheeting on the top. Yeah. See how much glue they put? Yeah. So if I take these screws all out and pry it. Good try. My only thing is, is that like this entire casing is glued. So if I do that, I might just destroy the entire top piece. Like, look at how much glue they have underneath. What is your other option? Uh, paint the whole thing a solid color and then use the fabric to make a pillow. Or try to upholster it If without... you painted it white and then you upholstered the top, would it look good? I'll try and get it off. I think I, it's good to try. I can leave the wood on the bottom this stain because nothing's wrong with the bottom of it. It just needs a wipe down because it's dusty. And tighten the legs and then upholster the top. Like you have an audience member. <laughs> Hi, Bun Bun. Let me try and get it off and then try to upholster it. Do you know what then, I'm saying? Like, yeah. look at how much they... Yeah, no, but let me try. Let me try. Let me okay, see if I can do it. This is on here from, I think, them carrying from shipping. So these can come off because I don't want them dangling Pull underneath. Pull it off. So there's... I also found a, a leather bag at that yard sale the other day that I 
forgot that I grabbed and it's kind of like ruined, but the strap is okay. So I kind of have a cool idea if I can upholster it to add like a ranchy vibe to the seat. You gonna boot it? Hey hun, look at the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That did not budge it. You're gonna go through it before you get it loose. <gasps> you did it. You're welcome. You amaze me with your your skills. My ingenuity, <laughs> the skills, yeah. Okay, this is perfect. This is exactly what I needed. The bottom is fine. We can live with the bottom the way that it is, or we can paint it, so we have options. I can now upholster. So since it's so nice out, I'm gonna put some type of a covering on this table so I can bring out the stuff to upholster it out here. I can't believe you got that off with your kicking skills. <laughs> five years of classical martial arts, huh? <laughs> When you were five. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going in to get my supplies. So since I'm using what I have, I'm not going out to buy foam, batten, all the things that you would normally use to upholster a bench. So this is like DIY, use what you've got. You've seen me upholster couches for our camper series. I've upholstered benches in Trash or Treasures for old bed frames and different benches. I've done tons of benches before when I've had proper materials like foam and batten and all the things. So today I'm using literally what I have since we're doing the entry with zero dollars. I'm getting really creative. So I have a couple pillow inserts. I was hoping that I could do two for my idea. So I robbed them out of pillows that were gonna go on the porch. And, but two is not big enough. So I have to put three. My fabric is just long enough to be able to go across this. That 50 cent fabric from the barn sale down the street. But I have an idea with a purse strap, but I'm hoping that you won't see that it's three pillows and we're just gonna pretend like it's two. So I'm gonna just do it and see if it works out. I can kind of see the print through to know if it's sort of straight. That's my plan. The underside I'm gonna lap layer underneath so that maybe you won't see the crease parts in between when I put my strap. Okay, so three is good for the strap and then I'm gonna have to pull and Holster that way. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah, and this is the purse. Okay, so I grabbed this from that same barn sale and you can see that the leather's been water damaged and kind of destroyed. But I thought it would be really cute to be able to salvage just a few sections here. And I was thinking of maybe some horse shaped cutouts for ornaments or something, but I guess I'll do that. But I'm gonna rob the handle off for this part of the idea that I'm gonna have once I get it upholstered. Permitted that the upholstery part works. <laughs> Staple gun. Oh, and I found like 25 staples in a bin. Do you need that? Fighting end? with the bench. Yeah. <laughs> Giving myself a little bit extra. Ooh, he's actually cut it pretty good. Mom's yelling at me. I've bought you 12 pairs of Fiskars over the past five years. <laughs> Turn away, Mom. Turn away. <laughs> Another one there in the middle. Kind of trying to make the corners a little more like rounded since the pillow overlays, so. Keep making my way around. Just wanna kinda see what it's doing here. Shall we? Okay. Ooh. Not bad. Not bad. Looks comfy. Okay. And it's got the feathered fill inserts, so it's actually like really sweet. Oh, feather fill. Okay. So my idea was to make it look like it has a bit of a ranchy vibe kind of to it. Yeah. Um, So, oh, I was, I want it right at 24. There we go. I'm gonna need a little nail on the leather. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I just wanna see if it works before I permanently stick it there. Want me to help? I think I'm okay. Okay. I just wanna see if I'm. You look happy, like it looks good. I think it's just a cool little detail. I don't know. 
we're gonna put more fasteners on and cut all the excess and everything but now I have what looks to be like two seat spots oh wow I think the feathers need to be sat on a few times to make it go into the shape a bit I like the little leather detail I think that's cute scrap for a lumbar pillow I think we have just enough it needs a wipe off and I need to fasten this properly but I want to see I'm dying to show you how this bench turned out this bench needed so much love because it was just completely destroyed and I knew when I saw that 50 cent piece of fabric that I had to own it. I had no idea at that moment what I was going to use it for. Sometimes I just tuck things away and use them on a rainy day, but today was the rainy day and it is dreamy. And then I remembered I picked up from that same sale a little purse that was completely ruined, but I knew I could salvage some leather off of it and that's just what I did. Okay, look at the bench. So because we're trying to do this small entryway makeover without spending any money at all, I got really creative. And although in the past on our channel you've seen me officially upholster things with the proper materials, I wasn't going to go out and buy anything to be able to do anything in this space. So I used what I had. So I robbed some IKEA feathered inserts from some very tired looking outdoor furniture. The inserts were still in great condition and so it was the perfect thing to kind of steal to put for padding inside, which made it really comfortable because it's feather filled. I used the fabric that we picked up at that thrift store. I actually think this goes way better with the decor that we're going for. Okay, so now that we have a bench in this space, we have a lot of other work to do. And since we're not ship lopping this whole space, I've been working on restoring some of the tin areas so that we can finish the painting and frame up the windows. Previous owners did put new windows in this house, so that was amazing, saved us on the budget for our renovation projects, but they didn't frame them in. So we're gonna work on some of that today. Before we get to that, I want to work on a faux oil painting. Remember that thrifted book I picked up? Well, we're going to use some artwork from that previously cut book. And we're going to cut out some artwork and create some small art prints we can put on the wall here in the entry. So it's no secret that I have an obsession of horses. And one of the books that I picked up at that barn sale the other day was this American Great American Illustrators. And in this book, I showed you in our previous video that there was some beautiful artwork and Philip and I went through and both put in little tags of which prints that we saw that were our absolute favorite and one that we were both quite fond of was this beautiful one that had sort of the blue and yellow vibes on it. It is a beautiful sky scene. It has some horses and what I wanted to do is change this from just a glossy print that's in an art book. Someone previously cut this book, so it's not a complete book. So I'm feeling zero guilt in cutting it myself <laughs> to salvage the pieces. Um, I don't know if you remember from one of my very first Trash to Treasure videos, you could go back on my Trash to Treasure playlist and watch it, but I actually cut hardcover books that we found in a trash pile, literally in a heaping dump, and they were all wet and ruined, and I got so much flack for cutting the books to make a secret hideaway little spot that you could put on a bookshelf, like a faux, you know, secret little cub cubby. And so I'm just making it very clear that I did not ruin this book myself, but I am going to save some of the beautiful artwork in it and put it in the entryway. But since it's just like a glossy, looks like a page from a book, I want to do a DIY that I found online that I thought was really neat and I'm dying to try it. I wanna make a faux oil painting out of this print. I'm gonna cut this out. I've already pre-measured it and Philip is going to cut an actual piece of wood that we can put this on to have the background canvas for this faux oil painting. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna make this look like a painting that looks very expensive rather than just a piece of artwork from this book. Okay, I'm cutting the book. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing something so naughty. I know. It's you... like, you just, you know, you grow up, don't rip books, don't cut books, but. Oh my gosh. Okay, you did it. I was like, did I cut that on page? Could you imagine? I'm going to cut this exactly on the color line, right where the color stops. It's just slightly off. It's 
So because the print is glossy, we don't really want it to be that way. It's just gonna look like a printed piece out of a magazine or a book. So I'm going to use some matte Mod Podge and I'm going to Mod Podge the painting on the back side to put it onto the wood first. And then I'm going to use the Mod Podge to be able to create detailing on the painting, giving it a little bit of a 3D shape as if it was an oil painting. It says on the bottle that Mod Podge takes four weeks to dry, but that it's basically dry you know, to the touch in 20 to 30 minutes. So we're gonna see how long it takes if we leave it a little bit goopy in some areas. So I'm thinking of leaving it thicker where you obviously have the three dimensional clouds and then smoother where you have the blue sky and kind of create a little bit of the shape of the land and give it a little bit of that like thicker vibe going on. So I'm gonna just kind of do a little bit along the background with a bigger paintbrush. And if you're gonna use Mod Podge, you just wanna make sure you clean your brushes right after with warm water so that you don't ruin your brush because it hardens pretty quickly to ruin your brushes. You always have a little bit of room to play since it doesn't dry that quickly. I'm going to take my paintbrush, smaller paintbrushes. I have a couple different ones here and I'm going to start putting some of the Mod Podge on and it's going to dry clear when it does the texture after. And just kind of do a little bit of the sky. I don't really want too much on this blue part of the sky, but just a little bit of like cross hatching textures if it was like an oil painting. Dopamine decor, baby. Dopamine, Dopamine decor. decor. Yeah, that's right. This looks so cool already. I can already see the spots that are raised and how they're drying. I hope you can tell on camera, but. Oh yeah, you can tell. The thick parts are already starting to dry and they're turning. That looks amazing. They're gonna be clear, which is cool. I'm really hoping that you can tell on camera but this looks like a real oil painting. It does not look like a print anymore. I am going to try to show you in as best lighting as possible, but it is now completely 3D textured. And if you have not done this before, I hope this inspires you to do it because I'm literally making a picture from a book that has so many prints in it that I like into like an expensive looking piece of artwork. Now I need to make a DIY frame for it. So head to your thrift store or your yard sale or even just the bookshelf you have at home Maybe that someone else already cut. And make yourself an art print with a little bit of Mod Podge. Super inexpensive. I'm gonna do this to tons of more prints now. So fun. It dried so fast. So four weeks drying time on the Mod Podge, it was like maybe 15 minutes in total and it was totally clear and showed the texture. So I'm gonna use some scrap pieces of wood and I wanna make a frame, just a normal box frame that's going to go around. If you wanna know how to make box frames, I have a wood sign. DIY video on my channel that will show you how to make the easiest simple box frame, but I'm going to just cut instead of having one by twos already on hand since I'm not buying anything. I'm going to make my own little one and a quarter inch deep frame so I can stain them and put them around my canvas to make this look framed. And that's just rough milled lumber, right? This is just rough milled lumber and we're just seeing it nice and smooth. are my sides of my frame and now I need to do the top and the bottom. So I'm going to get these ready so that I can make the measurements of what I need. I'm using the same stain that we use for the shelf which is Early American by Minwax. I just think it's nice just to keep it the same. So here is the finished result. My Mod Podge is all dry and I've created my faux oil canvas. I think it looks so beautiful. And I don't think you'd ever know that it was just from a book. You can see in the lighting, there's quite a bit of texture there. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I'm excited about how well 
my little painting here turned out doing the faux oil canvas is definitely something I want to do again. I'm not sure how much you can see in on camera how textured the art print now is. And just being able to be able to make like art prints and art prints and art prints by spending just only a few cents to make gorgeous little like faux canvases is such a fun idea. I'm going to hang this on one of the small walls here in the entryway. I'm not sure if I'll add any more because this might be addicting now on my end. The upholstered seat bench looks so good and it's so comfortable. We're all kind of going to fight over who gets to put the shoes on first because honestly, just having the downfilled insert to go inside was kind of better than putting a foam on anyways. So let me know what you think of the bench and I really encourage you to try to make one of these really neat canvas arts yourself. Hopefully you can see on camera how much texture there is, but in real life, they're pretty dreamy. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. And if you missed yesterday's episode where we started this entry, we have a lot more to go, so stay tuned.